Hi, welcome back, Pokemon Go players, to another episode of the Purify Podcast. I can't even talk anymore. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> today is November 5th, 2023. I am your host, Luis Palacios, with my co host, Chris. Yo, 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 it's your boy, Pokemon Trigger, please. We're back at it again. Uh, it's been a crazy, uh, you know, week and a half, of a few days. Uh, but <laughs> we definitely got a lot to recap. Uh, we were waiting for a nice little news dump, and uh, we got delivered. Uh, so, yeah. Um, hope you guys have had a good one. Uh, we're definitely going to have fun telling you guys some stories about how our events have gone. Uh, definitely some pretty wild catches for both of us this week. So I'm, I'm pretty excited uh, f- to tell you guys all about our catches. Bro, it's been insane, definitely. We had so much to really cover uh, our thoughts between the Halloween event part two, which uh, I'm pretty sure everybody knew about that. Yeah, the other Mortos, Lugia Ray Day or Ray Weekend, I guess you say. Um, yeah, just like all around, just amazing stuff and a lot to going on, anyways. But you know, let's not keep our our, our listeners waiting because I know they've been waiting for quite a bit of time, and I appreciate everybody who sticks around even when we have nothing to talk about because you know we are here once again to talk about pokemon just Go news, vibing. right updates and write about the game because we love the game just as much as you do uh also don't don't let us forget to tell you that we are part of the professor network so ask us out professor network.com slash professor podcast chris disappeared but now he's back thank you <laughs> um uh wonderful people to work with every single time ken adam jamal chris and will just wonderful people there's other podcasts please check them out every single day if you can uh but yeah so we are wow we're right into november uh i know we cover all the news technically from the beginning of november and everything that was actually gonna happen so now everything did and now we're here (laughs) so we gotta we got quite a bit of it um to really recap when it comes down to it but it's crazy Let's start, before we actually get into our hauls, because our hauls are like the massive thing, let's get into first uh, some of the things that happened those last few times. So, as my last podcast, we had Halloween Part 2 starting. Now, I was a little bit sick. Uh, I actually couldn't really grind the last three days of Part 1, I think it was called. And then Part 2, like, roll over right in the next day, and finally I was able to grind a little bit. And it started pretty well. Um, I think that at least when it came down to part one, it was eh, okay, because we had, like, what, the uh, Phantom spawns for the first time, and the, um, also, it was a Punkaboo that was a spawn. No, it was Phantom. Phantom was the chase on part one, right? Yeah, um, for part one, uh, Phantom was definitely more in the wild. And uh, I think it was a bigger chase than uh, Phantom, honestly. Yeah, yeah. I think Phantom was like the redder of the of the bunch, while um, uh, Funkaboo was the one that actually spun the most for a little bit. And of course, it was the one without the costume. So it was kind of like, if you get the shiny, cool. If not, I guess. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was one of those things. In it. And of course, we have extra, extra large and extra, extra small. Uh, because... For some reason, Pokemon is the only one that has those kind of things happening in the in the overworld. Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, we uh, we miss the uh, the decorations of Halloween. Now the the game looks bland as it is, you know, for the last seven years and a half. <laughs> also, Kiki, thank you for joining us. Uh, but yeah, so after that, we jumped right into Halloween Part Two, uh, which uh, happened to be like literally the homestead of costumes. Because that's all you see in the map between the old customs of uh, Pimplup, uh, Bulpix. We had a new custom for Gengar, new custom for Pikachu. Uh, what else do we had? Uh, oh, customs for Ponkaboo. Between <laughs> and then all the other ghost types. Uh, Piplup and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said Piplup in the beginning. Uh, we also have the release of Shiny Sora, which everybody's hunt at that point. And that's one of the things that we're going to recap for sure. Uh, through all that and all of those, you know, l- Pokemons that we had actually at that point, we had Lugia Ray Weekend. Two days of only Lugia. Definitely some things there that we're going to be sharing for sure. Um, the first day was kind of like interesting. I think people were still out and about, but we weren't going like super hard, like at the beginning of each day. They say that the race starts at 10, but of course it started super early for everybody. So nobody was going <laughs> to wake up at six o'clock in the morning to do it. 
unless you were really grinding. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, it's like Christmas morning for some raiders. Yeah, I know, right? Um, Get out of bed, mom. It's time to raid Lugia. Yeah, I know, right? Who's going to raid Lugia at 3 a.m.? Oh, boy, 3 a.m. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so that is, um, but that was, of course, the weekend uh, right before Halloween finished, technically, or it was the weekend before Halloween at that point. Uh, then we had two more days of Halloween. Um, everybody was going for their chases, of course. Then we roll over into November. On the 1st of November, starting Dia de los Muertos, which is the Mexican-inspired event for the whole world. And, of course, if you were in Mexico, you actually had um, extra bonuses when it comes down to it. But regardless of that, maybe two or technically one new custom, new custom Pokemon was released during the time and another one that came back from the previous year. Only two days. They won uh, 1st and 2nd of November, of course. Uh, that was, of course, Duskull with the Senpatsu Shield hat and then Cubone with the Senpatsu Shield hat for some reason. So um, I guess, you know, they're festive when it comes down to it. I'll let you know uh, my stories when that happened. I actually lost a shiny during that day, so actually that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, I I, th- I think they look pretty. Um, not not anything too crazy, but I, I do think they uh, look nice at least. And then right after that, the week continues on. We have Anella Spawns, uh, which is nice because we really, really do need some times mm-hmm. like that. However, yeah, this... and, uh, honestly, there, there are some pretty good spawns right now, even without the events going on. Oh, yeah, definitely. And then at the end of this week, we had Community Day Whooper, which, well, again, we'll talk about all our experiences there anyways. So now that we recap what all the other events are, and then, of course, we'll tell you exactly how we got everything that we got. Let's recap our shinies and hundos, shall we? How about you yeah. go first? Because I got I got quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, start out uh, usual grind spot. Uh, there's a little mini Ralts nest for a little while, uh, so I was able to grab a Ralts. Uh, I hatched a Hundo Jingma O. Uh, that definitely made me happy. I don't have to hunt crazy for that on the calm day. Um, got a shiny. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Ekans uh, during a part one of the Halloween event and also a Alolan uh, Meowth. So it's like, eh, whatever. <laughs> uh, traded for a uh, Shiny Rayquaza, always trying to get that Shundo. Always. Um, but it was a 14, 15, 13. Um, I'll always take a Shiny Rayquaza though. Uh, I got a level one female uh, costume Pikachu. Uh, very happy always when I get the level ones. Um got a shiny uh shadow lugia uh the only one i got for the whole raid day um i do have a purified hundo i can do uh i haven't purified it yet it's more like am i gonna put lugia on my master league team not yet but i i have one good to go um i also got a level one sableye shiny i actually didn't notice it was level one that's funny (laughs) uh (laughs) i got a useless hundo uh, it's like a level 35 uh, Piplup uh, costume. I'm saving it in case it uh, is able to evolve in the future. You never know. Got an extra, extra large costume Pumpkaboo shiny. I'm so happy about this one. I, I'm really glad to have that. Uh, I got a level 1 shiny Zora. Uh, wild on its own. And then uh, that same day, I got a second shiny Zora uh, a lot higher in level, very happy about that. I'm trying to do a mirror trade on one of them, probably not the level one. Uh, I also snagged a 0 14 15 shiny Piplup with the costume. I want to evolve it so bad, but you can't evolve costumes yet, so I'll, I'll be holding on to it. Um, after the events ended, I was able to get a shiny Eevee, uh, traded for a uh, shiny Rylu. Uh, it was a 13, 15, 13. Uh, yesterday, I got a shiny Swinub uh, level 1 on the way home. That was weird. Why is it so many level 1 shinies? I don't know, uh, brother. <laughs> uh, and then I got, uh, I think we said 13 shiny whoopers is yeah. uh, how many I got today. Yeah. Um, I I didn't get as lucky, but I'm kind of glad I don't have the space. Um, I <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I traded a shiny Gibble for a shiny uh, Hollywag, and uh, it was a 13, 14, 15. Uh, decent. 
Uh, right before that, I did a raid for Genesect uh, with Pure Lighter and uh, the little gang we were traveling around with, and I didn't even realize uh, I got a Hundo Genesect uh, with the the current uh, little dowser thing. So uh, yeah, we, we'll take that. <laughs> and then um, so traded again. Uh, got a shiny Mewtwo for a shiny uh, Snorlax with a cowboy hat I traded. Uh, and of course it was 12, 15, 15. I wish it was better attack, but that's okay. Um, and then, uh, right before, uh, we started, uh, doing the podcast, uh, I did some trades with Julie, got like, uh, a 96 Claude's, uh, qua- uh, what's his name? Whooper. Uh, and I only Claude really wanted Sire, the Paldan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I could evolve it into Claude's Sire. Get the 96. I'm like, okay, I won't get better. Evolve it right away. Keep trading. 98 okay uh evolve that right away okay i'm like whatever i'll keep trading just in case i got the lucky hundo <laughs> i got the hundo. i'm so happy oh, yeah. uh so yeah i got i evolved it uh i'm probably gonna have to transfer the other two but that's okay <laughs> i'm very it's like, happy it's like 96 okay got it 98 yeah it's right? oh, yeah. like walking up the <laughs> stairs man <laughs> But um, yeah, I know Carolina's got a wild, a wild collection to tell you about this week, guys. Okay, so please listen. It's hype. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so hauls for this week, and we're gonna go with Hondos and Chinese at the same time because that's a that's a good one in there, anyways. Uh, we're gonna start with part one Akens. I think I talked about this last time. Uh, then we have a Shuppet part one again from the Halloween event. I actually got on my second Genga clip. I get my Gengar with the costume shiny. I was like, I'm super happy that I got this super early in the week. I didn't really have to grind for it too much. I wasn't even seeing that much afterwards, so it's actually interesting, but still, I got the shiny there. Then again, a Pokeboo with a hat. I think it was done the same day. Yeah, the same day. I think I got home and then I clicked on a Pokeboo and it was shiny, so I was actually kind of happy about that. Uh, another chase that I need, I definitely, definitely need it. So it's kind of nice to have. I got the Yamask a few days later on the special research story from either the, um, I guess the, uh, yeah, one of the two. The special research story that we got Galarian Mr. Ma- or Galarian Mitchell Mask on it. So that's actually I'm pretty jealous. Cool. Bro, I was actually happy about that. I was like, yes, shiny, there we go, there we go. Uh, yeah, but special research story from that. Then uh, I traded for a um, Ryolu. So like a Ryolu right there. It's not the best IV, so it's you know one of those things. Uh, also traded for a Rayquaza. I don't know when or how, but I did it. Oh yeah, that was with you, with you actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I traded. Oh it. yeah. <laughs> that, that was like, oh yeah, that's the shit. That's, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. Probably gotta go home anyways. Okay, so Ray Day, Lugia. We go ahead and we are like, if this is, I think this is the second day, right? Yeah, this is the second day. I didn't get the shiny on the first day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because we were raiding hard on Sunday. Yeah. So we were on about, as always, you know, we do one of the raids. Everybody in the car is like, oh, we we're hopefully get the shiny and everything. Chris and I get the shiny Lugia together, the shadow shiny Lugia together. And if you actually already know why it's purified, you probably know the reason why. So we were like, okay, our CPs are actually pretty good. Or like, I think mine was like, what, 26 or 20, um, 2106 or something like that? I, th- I think it was like 21 something. <coughs> I, I yeah. cannot remember, but I, th- I want to say it was like 21 something crazy. Yeah. And we were like, hmm, that sounds pretty high. Yeah, it's like we were close. I think the handle was like 21, 32, 34, I think is what I call. However, the game is me. The, you know, we were like, okay, this may be the close of the hundo. I mean, I'll be happy just getting the hundo purified because I won one. I've been needing one for a while uh of course it looks shiny so we're like okay cool so this is gonna be a nice catch easy to do because lugia was a disaster to catch during the entire weekend <laughs> i think we lost a few lugias along the way so that's interesting oh easily here yeah. yeah uh so i look at my ivs and it's an even 13 13 13 cut off of the purify hundo and it was shiny so i did get my shundo lugia Purify. I didn't even hesitate it because I knew I wasn't gonna get another one at this point. <laughs> I was like, okay, whatever, let's do it. Max out, double move, elite ATM, everything in the case maybe. It's ready for a Master League meta. Um, I have yet to use it. I'm gonna start best binding it after I finish with my sister, anyways. So yeah. It took him less than a minute to have this thing level fifty. 
<laughs> well, I he did was ha- on it. I was on it with all the uh, <laughs> the extra large candy too. So because I knew we were gonna have enough candy for it, and I was close to getting the extra large candy for it. We were getting a lot of them too from the special from the event itself. So that was pretty good <laughs> candy from catching and everything. So yeah, uh, then I think I got a yeah a research for uh, re- field research Glygar. I, I actually got the Phantom on morning, I think, on the 30th. So that's actually pretty good. So a couple of days before. Even that then. Too. Another Noibat <laughs> on the same day. I don't know how. A Drifloom. Why not? Uh, yeah, mask. Uh, actually, I did this during Ray Day with you, right? Yeah. Uh, I want to say. <coughs> oh, yeah. The mask for sure. Yeah, because it's on November 1st. So, yeah. Uh, and then we talked about Community Day. Yes, we did get 23 Shinies. Mm-hmm. Hey, hey, me. 24 shinies. Drowsy finally got to me today. <laughs> 24 shinies. One of them is in home right now, so because I traded for one of them. As for the final hundos of the week, um, I, I hatch another Happini hundo, so that's actually... What? Yeah. <laughs> and I was able to get a clock sire from a research breakthrough that was hundo, so I'm happy about that too. Knowing that if I, I could use it at Ultra League, I'd already max it out, ready to go. I already had a Quagsire ready, or at least a Whooper ready, that was handled with Community Day. I don't know why I saved that, but I guess I did, and then I just evolved it, so it has a Community Day move. So I got the Family Hondo, or at least the two powerhouses of itself. But anyways, <laughs> Quagsire and everything, and that was technically my hole. After that, it's just been like weird spawns every now and then, because the catches out there. I already transferred like everything that I didn't want. So, Yeah. It's been a pretty good week. I got quite a bit of Chinese during Gondolin Part 2, which I'm actually happy about, since I felt like I really didn't play half of the first part anyway, so... Yeah, it's it's always a fun hunt. Uh, like, uh, Phantom was insane, Zora was insane to hunt for, and uh, I know both of us didn't have the Pumpkaboo yet, so... Yeah. Uh, yes. That was really a lot of fun. I'm, I'm really uh, kind of happy with how it turned out. Yeah. I, 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 I think a lot of us got to remember, you can't get everything. Yeah, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I got. <laughs> One of the things that I always love about this game is that I have learned to get to the point where I'm like, I don't need to have every single shiny on the day of release. It will come back. It will have another chance. Um, you know, this could be a good catalyst to say don't spend so much money on it. But of course, you want to get be the first one to get it regardless. Um, but, you know, things like that, you know, the 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 Lugias, the, uh, the raids, special research, special Pokemons. I mean, just getting the uh, Hondo Spirit Tomb was actually pretty amazing on the, <laughs> during the Spirit Dude, that was crazy. <laughs> so, regardless of how it may be, the Pokemons will come back. We'll have more chances in the future, as always. Um, as long as the game keeps going, we will definitely be able to catch anything and everything in due time. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those things in the other day. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. I mean, that, that's been a recap, a good 20 minutes of recap when it comes down to it, because it definitely was a good chunk of stuff here, but we are not going away with, of course, with having some piece of news for the rest of the week, um, because we actually have some pretty interesting stuff happening this next week. <laughs> so, uh, how about, since I've been talking for a while now, Chris, kick us out for the first event of the research topics today. All right, all right, all right. Um... So this is going to be a returning event. Uh, I think it's a nice, fun one. Uh, we're going to be having the Festival of Lights coming back, and we're going to have a new Pokemon uh, getting debuted, and it's going to be Tadbulb. Uh, so something they uh, like to do, which I'm pretty sure uh, they're going to talk about doing again, is that some of the Pokemon will light up uh, during this event. So I'm, I'm really... Yes, they are. Okay, cool. Uh, so the Festival of Lights is uh, happening soon in Pokemon Go, and you can look forward to encountering Tadbulb as it's making its uh, Pokemon Go debut. Some Pokemon in the wild will as- uh, also have a glowing effect at nighttime. Uh, it's very minimal, but it is uh, very nice to see, even if it is only for this event. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the Festival of Lights. It will start Tuesday, November 7th at 10 a.m. to Sunday, November 12th at uh, 8 p.m. local time. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Uh, that means it's going to be going on for five days. And is is that really the Pokemon it is? The El, El Tadpole Tadpo. Pokemon? Yeah. Like Electric Tadpole, I guess? Okay, I don't interesting. know. Uh, or uh, Ile, Ile, Ile Tadpole or Ile Tadpole? Ele Tadpole? Yeah, I've, I've never seen that uh, before, but <laughs> I can't say I ever looked it up. 
uh, and its evolution Bellabolt will be in the game. Uh, you're only going to need 50 Tadbulb candies to evolve Tad, uh, Tadbulb into Bellybolt, but uh, use your Pineapps. Uh, event bonuses. Two times Stardust for hatching Pokemon. That's hype. Uh, incenses in... Oh, uh, excluding, sorry. Uh, the daily adventure incense will last twice as long. Uh, do keep that in mind, because when you use a regular incense, you won't be able to use your daily uh, during that time period. And then uh, there's going to be two times candy for hatching Pokemon, so they're definitely trying to get you to hatch your eggs during this event. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, timed research. Uh, event exclusive timed research will be available throughout the event, and uh, you can uh, complete the timed research uh, that's going to be focused on exploring and catching Pokemon. Uh, complete the research task to earn an exclusive shirt, uh, avatar item, and encounters with event-themed Pokemon. Uh, I think you guys can already guess some of them, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, here's going to be the wild encounters. Uh, there's going to be Pikachu, Volpix, Ponyta, Magnemite, Voltorb, Chinchou, Mareep, Slugma, Electric, Litwick, and some trainers will in, uh, encounter the following Morlul and Tadbulb. Uh, there's only one of these Pokemon that won't be shiny, and that means that one of them is going to be uh, brand new shiny. So Tadbulb is the one that won't be shiny. Morlul is going to be the first time, uh, for the first time in Pokemon Go, is going to be shiny available, uh, but it's going to be a rare spawn, so keep your eyes peeled. Uh, in the eggs, uh, the following Pokemon are going to be hatching from the 7 kilometer eggs during this event. And uh, more little hatch from the eggs will have a greater chance of being a shiny Pokemon. Please Pause. don't get mad at us. We're just Pause. relaying that they, they might have a higher uh, shiny odd. <laughs> so it's going to be Elekid, Magby, Dedene, and Morlul. Okay. I don't know about you. If I hatch a Dedene, I'm going to throw my phone. <laughs> okay, so let me, let me, let me literally this for anybody out there. So this whole hatch from eggs will have a great chance of being a shiny Pokemon. <clears throat> has been a feature for the last i don't know six months and whenever yeah, they actually I mean, do something like, like this it has not pan out for anybody really that the ability to get your incubators and all that it's really not worth it yes it is worth it to get shiny like it bagby and then it because of the pokemons in there so each one of the pokemons will be shiny um the pool is going to be very very small but still please 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 for the love of god don't spend so much money on this <laughs> Take it with a grain of salt, for sure. Yeah. Because, uh, like, uh, I know people were hunting hard, hatching all the eggs they could for, like, Tyrant. Yeah. Uh, I only saw, like, a few people hatch it. Mm. Uh, and the people that hatched it only hatched one. So it's like, if you're hatching 200 eggs for one shiny, is it worth it? L let's do a it little depends. bit of math here. <laughs> let, let's, let's, let me take my calculator out for a second here, because... It's, it's, oh, no. Because think about this. Okay, so you can open what? About 20 eggs or 20 gifts? Let's say, <laughs> let's just say that each one of those eggs or gifts has an egg. So a that's, one in four chance of hatching more little. Yeah, so let's say that's 20 eggs that you get per day and you catch, you know, and all that. And this is just on the maximum because, again, you will probably not get all the eggs out of the seven g or the, the gifts anyways. Um, so that's times five. That's a hundred eggs in total if you can actually catch them or hash them. Um, yeah, no, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Uh, we're not, we don't have a bonus that actually increases, um, hash distance or anything. So it's definitely not worth it. If you are thinking that that might be the only way to really get those shinies, go for it. I don't really think that that's the worst part about it, but still, I don't feel like you should actually like contribute to, yeah. this, to this. And this is something that... Niantic probably needs to fix, because if they are just going to word it, there are greater chances of actually getting it from eggs. At least give us I want to know how more. much. Yeah, yeah, how, how yeah. much boosted. Yeah. Because, uh, like, it could just be, like, one more shiny roll or something. So, yeah. like, instead of one out of 500, it's two out of 500. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't know. But, anyways, continue on. Yeah, uh, so increased incense encounters. Uh, so, if you guys remember, the incenses are going to last twice as long. And uh, these Pokemon are also going to be spawning off your incense. Uh, Alolan Geodude, Hisuian Voltorb, uh, Slugma. I'm holding myself back so much every single time I say that. Uh, Voltorb, Illumise, Blitzel, Litwick, Litleo, Dedene, Morlul, 
and Tadbulb. Uh, the only two Pokemon that cannot be shiny are Hisuian, Voltorb, and Tadbulb out of there. Uh, so pretty good odds of finding a shiny. Um, I want to say that at least the ability of getting Bulby is actually pretty nice for five days. <laughs> Uh, mostly because it is a regional Pokemon, or at least the regional for the other two, the other mice. So if you're actually getting get your ball beat, it's probably your best chance of getting it now, anyways. Yeah, uh, and if for whatever reason you can't, I'm sure there's going to be someone you can trade. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's pretty hype. Um, so the field research encounters. Uh, the three Pokemon you'll be able to encounter from field research tasks are Deramaka, Molo, and Tadbulb. I'm pretty hyped about that. That's a pretty good collection, honestly. I like all three of those. Darumak is a pretty good fire-type Pokemon, no matter how much you look <laughs> at it. Getting a shiny or Shanda will be nice. Uh, moral of the new shiny, of course, Tapo, if you really want to get more candies for that Pokemon. <laughs> and then uh, Pokestop Showcase. Ooh, we forgot to talk about that. No, uh, be on the lookout for showcases at different uh, Pokestops. Uh, that will feature uh, Litwick and Tadbulb. I'm actually pretty hyped. I got an extra large uh, Litwick, good to go. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm glad about that. Uh, the new avatar item. Ooh, that's pretty. Uh, the following new avatar item will be available, and uh, it is going to. Well, they just show a picture of it, but uh, it's uh, your character, and it looks like they're holding up. A uh, one of those uh, things, what... yeah. The the f the floating lanterns. Yeah. Uh, I think that's just what they're called. Uh, if you guys have seen the movie Tangled, kind of like those things. Yeah. Uh, and a really cool shirt that kind of looks like Litwick's flames all over it. Yeah, uh, which I really, I really like. I do really like the shirt combination. If that's gonna be like the pose, that's gonna be nice. I don't think they said anything about a pose. It's just an item, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, exclusive bonuses for trainers in India. Uh, trainers located in India can look forward to special collection challenge that awards Stardust, XP, and an encounter with Tadbulb. Uh, they can also encounter, uh, earn twice the candy for catching Pokemon during the Festival of Lights event. That's going to be pretty cool for them. I do and like then, that uh, most of the uh, events that are happening are reminiscent of their uh, basically like parts of the world events. You know, the other Mortos was for Mexico. Now we're actually having the India one. You know, things like that that actually helps the trainers in those specific countries. Yeah, it, it almost gives um, people a reason, uh, or if they just happen to be, like, traveling at the time, uh, and they happen to be in the places where uh, these events are more prominent, uh, it kind of kind of helps you celebrate more, I feel like. that. That's just me, though. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> also, uh, look forward to a raid day on November 11th. And uh, I think that already got announced, right? Yeah, we're about to actually talk about it anyway. Okay, we're yeah. Really I, I, was like, I was like, I'm pretty sure we're <laughs> definitely talking about that soon. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that event seems pretty stacked, uh, honestly. So they're keeping the ball rolling. I do think that the wild spots are actually pretty nice, aside from the ones that we definitely would have anyways. Uh, I'm kind of sad that you won't see, I think it was Blitzel that was actually one of the Pokemons that was from the previous Festival of Lights events that were part of the bright overworld Pokemons out there. So I don't know which Pokemons are really going to be part of it. I know Chinchou is probably going to be one, Moral for sure, Litwick, uh, you know, those Pokemons that had those special overworld shine out there. <laughs> we'll see if they, you know, they add a few more things just in there. Maybe Slugma will be actually, and, type, and Tumble for sure, because Tumble looks like a libel anyway. So it's not much Yeah, I, I, I think the light around it looks pretty <clears throat> cool. So I'm definitely looking forward to all of it. Yeah, so definitely... <laughs> A cool event and rolling off into uh, after everything that we really had this last week, anyway. So we really don't have time to waste when it comes down to this event, anyways. Uh, but November is kicking off. Pride, 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 right? I don't even know how to say it anymore. Right into the and uh, the events, anyways. So let's get into the next piece of news here, and this is going to be something that a lot of people are really excited about. And of course, you know, the blog post actually teased that out. We have Mega Garnshaw makes its earth-shaking debut in Pokemon Go. This is by far probably one of the best Megas out there. Uh, and we're going to talk about it. So it's actually pretty nice. So Mega Garnshaw will be making its earth-shaking Pokemon Go debut and will feature in a race during this special raid day. Now, here's the thing. I was not thinking that this was going to be a raid day. I was thinking this was going to be like a Hisuian Pokemon or something else. that they just decided to say, hey, we're going to put it a raid day for no reason. You know, like Lapras or things like that. And we're like, okay, well, this is, <laughs> this is forever, nothing. But no, I guess they really said, okay, here you go. This is something you guys want to do on, a, on the Saturday. 
Um, this yeah, also... they're like, oh, people are finally doing mega raids. Uh, I guess we'll make it a raid day, <laughs> <laughs> right? And that's pretty good, anyways. But still, so uh, right before we actually start this part of the news, is that November 11th is when it's happening, 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. If you are in the United States, it's also a um, holiday for us. Um, it is the Veterans Day, so uh, make sure that you are, you know, um, pay your respects as much as you can because people out there. You know, sacrifice a lot for this country anyway, so we definitely want to give those respects anyways. However, we'll be out there playing some Pokemon Go while we can anyways. So, uh, again, Saturday, November 11th from 2 to 5 p.m., Mega Garchomp basic Pokemon Go debut. If you're lucky, you may even encounter a shiny Garchomp. Um, it just becomes in pink, I guess, I should say. Um, Garchomp being one of those uh, really strong Pokemons out there. So, event bonuses. Uh, the remote raid pass limit will be increased to 10 on a Saturday Number 11 from 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. So you have literally 20 or 20, almost close to 24 hours to actually do your 10 remote rates. Huh. Is it a cool thing? Yeah. But if once you actually finish it off, then, then you're not going to do more than five or so at that point if you're actually out there. However, though, if you go in person, you can receive up to five additional daily Ray passes from spinning Pokestops at gyms during the event, so at least that's free five rays, enough to make it, to get the energy for Mega Garchomp. And of course, you'll have an increased chance of encountering Shiny Garchomp in Mega, from Mega Raids. I don't know how strong this increase will be. We have seen it with, you know, the Hisuian Pokemons anyways. So we may actually get some pretty good ones, so we may want to actually go a little ham on this one. <laughs> when it comes yeah, to it. Um... Yeah, the fact I, I'm curious if the increased chance of encountering shiny Garchomp from Megrit. I mean, uh, I'm always curious how how boosted it's actually going to be. I know uh, for the Hoenn starters when they released that uh, Mega, like uh, when all three of those were released, the yeah. shiny outs were super good for that. I'm yeah. I'm curious if it's going to be like uh, kind of like a Lapras Day or not, like uh, the one in you know fifty or one in like thirty kind of ish odds. Yeah, so it's it's definitely going to be. Um... A interesting data regardless this is a raid day so all the gyms will actually have mega raids uh i don't think there's gonna be one that's not gonna have one with that point so if you have a plan with a group do it i mean i would suggest just getting the mega energy regardless um if you want to just do the free ones that's fine too if you can afford some of the remote ones you know even though as expensive as it may be however maybe um yeah uh, <laughs> mega dragon and bring your ice types ground and dragon not mega and dragon <laughs> but yeah uh yeah anyways uh event exclusive ticket so if you actually want to pay five dollars or equivalent pricing to your cur current local currency uh you'll be able to purchase the ticket with the following bonuses this bonuses will be effective on saturday november 11 from 2 to 10 p.m local time eight additional ray passes from speeding focus stops at gym so a total of 14 daily could be 15 if you actually waited one extra you know if you don't rate the day before uh, increased chance of getting rare X candy XL from array battles. Uh, we had a community day, so there's really not much difference there. People are screaming, <laughs> looking at the yeah, yeah, fifty percent more experience from ray battles, and then two times start those hey, from rare ray battles. Keep it, keep in mind, uh, the raid battles doesn't necessarily mean you have to do the mega raids, right? But I don't think you're gonna see anything but mega raids during those hours, anyways. Two p.m. To 10 p.m. Oh. Okay, that's actually pretty interesting. So, I, I mean, what what's the active uh, five star? Is that still going to be Genesect? Because uh, it's like, eh, I don't really want Genesect either. Let me check the content. <laughs> but, uh, I, I think that's definitely a, an interesting <coughs> addition. I think, but I think it actually rolls say, over to another Pokemon. So let me actually check uh, the content news from november if i can find it so give me a second okay yeah but uh like keep in mind guys like the rare candy extra large from raid battles like we we still don't know like how high the boost is it's not like supreme odds right Ugh, drowsy anyways um no we'll actually have barisian at the time so Ooh. if you i mean it's not the greatest, but it is an ultra league monster, so maybe you can actually uh, really benefit from that. I don't know. I think that after the Vega raid day, I think I'm pretty much done, even though you know you get to the match. So. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean that's part of that event. Uh, then we have the web exclusive bundle uh, for four point ninety nine. You get a 
bundle that includes three remote ray passes and two premium ray passes. Eh, for five dollars, it's not bad. It's like basically just one uh, one dollar per remote for per pass, anyways. Even the remotes, mm. so it's not a bad deal when it comes down to it. Of course, you know you want to do your ten if you actually have the chance to do it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in the in game, <coughs> the bundles five ninety five coins were the same deals from that, anyways. So ah, I'm dying here, anyways. Uh, but yeah, that is Mega Guard Shop. So let's talk about the usability of Mega Guard Shop in Pokemon Go because this is basically a pseudo legendary Pokemon that we've been dying to get. Um, we have had a few and we're still looking for a few more, of course. Um, but in the end of the day, Guard Shop, at least in Pokemon Go, as far as I know, will be the best behind Primal Groudon ground type attacker in the game. I mean, that's pretty good anyways, right? Yeah, uh, I the way I'm looking at it, uh, kind of a, a mix of Rayquaza and Primal Groudon. But I don't know where you would prefer to use Mega Garchomp. Uh, I think it's kind of niche, but it is cool. I mean, do having it for the typing of Dragon, which Groudon doesn't actually cover in its, its, its three typings... Uh, yeah. can be beneficial in some ways because ground is actually very good into um, just anything that you find in the wild anyways. As for the dragons, if you actually just, you know, mega, mega evolve. I mean, we do have quite a bit of dragons anyways in the mega pool anyways. Oh, yeah. But uh, this one could actually benefit in that sense just because, you know, it is guard jump. Now, yeah, it is kind of intuitive to say that we already have Groudon as one of the probably possible best Great attackers, ground great attackers, anyways. Uh, mm-hmm. It still have a little bit of weakness because of his water type. Uh, Garchomp does actually have less of a weakness because it's a dragon type. So had, even even if we if we do it in different types of meta, so let's say we go into back into the mega you know battles out there for PvP or something. Yes, Groudon will surpass Garchomp, but Garchomp can devastate anybody with his moves anyways. Like, Garchomp can uh, actually beat a Primal if, if, if go, or at least Mega Garchomp can defeat a Primal in a one-to-one scenario. Just for the reason that Groudon is also a Fire-type and takes super effective damage for anything that does. Uh, I will say, uh, because it's already had the comp day, there may be people that already have, you know, the level 50 Hondo or, you know, just a really high... Uh, High IV, high level, uh, Garchomp, good yeah. to go. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think it's going to be a lot easier for people to, you know, have a really good uh, Pokemon to raid with uh, mm-hmm. after getting the Mega Energy for this. So um, I don't, I don't think it's bad. I, I do think it's a little bit more niche though for uh, the people that, uh, you know, have all the Megas, all the Primals, uh, but like we're still going to want to use it. Like, let's be real. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> One thing also that um, you just mentioned, actually, because of it has a community day, maybe they'll do a little sneak and sneak the kind of deal and actually put the community day book, uh, move on guard shop during the mega raid day. That would be nice. That is possible. Uh, usually they announce it, but I mean, if possible, also just for the reason that having his community day move will probably um, help a lot of the players out there that didn't have the chance to really get that to that point. So, uh, especially new ones and all that too. So. It could be a really good budget ground type for, for a lot of people if they just do the race anyways. So I would suggest, as always, just do enough for your Mega Raid Day or for your Mega Evolution. If you want to do more or have the ability to do more, do it. So that way you can actually power up your Mega Level 3. Um, just because it always is a niche to actually have a Mega during any type of community day or special event out there. So always keep an eye that it's good to have something that's going to help you in the long run. So. <laughs> But yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes down to um, Garn Shop. I know it's still powerful. It's a beautiful shiny Mega. It actually turns like purple, kind of the other, better than his uh, actually regular shiny. Yeah, it's like uh, Gengar, where it turns like from bad to good. Yeah, yeah, so. Anyway, so that is that. Um, that's actually pretty good. So we have a little bit of time. Let's contact some other things here before we move on to our PvP section. Also, we'll have to do a little bit of a check in on Pokemon Sleep just because. <laughs> we love that game too much anyways yeah it's 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 so fun <laughs> yeah so um city safari zone or city safari in mexico was happening this weekend too um 
basically the same as the last two city safaris um the eb with uh the explorer hat is out there everybody wants that uh go uh go goat or go yeah go goat or skidoo were the shiny or the shiny available new shiny pokemons for a lot of people um surprisingly or actually not surprisingly they actually put <laughs> um does go with the Sepatrici hat on it, so mm. you actually got another chance of doing it if you were actually playing their event. Um, Whooper was part of the spawn pool, and people were getting the shiny more than before the community day started. So, <laughs> uh, and then yeah, Halucha and all those Pokemons out there. I saw a few videos, I saw a few streams out there from people who were going. I know Lando Alpha actually went, uh, True Inferno, Trainer Tips, um, Awesome Adams. You know, a couple uh, or in glitch and um, I know that, yeah, I'm I'm like skipping on her name right now, but <laughs> uh, Avi, uh, Avery or AB, uh, also like a glitch partner actually went there too. So, <laughs> so a lot of people actually went. Actually, pretty cool. Everybody had some amazing events. Uh, I think some amazing time. I think Mexico was actually a pretty good city. There was another event actually happening at the same time, but just not Pokemon good related, but. It is what it is, you know, you can't really predict sometimes what other events are going to happen during the time. So, a lot of people out there, I think it was a fun event. Did you see anything from them? Um, I, I didn't see that much, uh, honestly. I've been working a lot this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, there's a few, probably a few more videos that are going to happen to appear alongside it. So, it is how it is. Um, it's really not that bad when it comes down to it. However, though, there is something that I wanted to talk about. Um, and this is actually from Pokemon Go Hub. <coughs> Let's talk about what Niantic thinks about the future of Pokemon Go Fest, Safari Zone, and Safari Zone events. So, uh, somebody from Pokemon Go Hub was able to interview some people from Niantic working or Ni working at Niantic about the special events that we have every year. Specifically, something about City Safari and Safari Zones at that point. I'm not going to go through the entire article when it comes down to it. I believe that there's more to it. So, they talked to, and this was actually during uh, Barcelona City Safari. <coughs> Uh, they had around roughly an hour talking with Philip Marks, uh, Director of Regional Marketing and Site Leading uh, Hamburger Office, and then Lena Silas, who works at the Live Events Manager, EMEA, and then I did uh, Germany, I guess, Hub or something, I guess, at least. So, uh, really, to summarize on it, first and foremost, they want to summarize the City Safaris are a success. Um, the economic impact that actually happened because of Sirius Safari was over 22 million euros estimated across all channels that include spending in restaurants, lounging, and public transportation and more. So, you know, it helps the city when a lot of Pokemon Go players go out and play Pokemon <laughs> because they're spending money on places, you know, like restaurants and lounging and all those places out there. It works well because at the same time, you go around the city, definitely different from Safari Zone in that sense. <coughs> um... Why is why is it that they are actually prioritizing or prioritizing city safari zones instead of safari zones? Um, when it comes down, it says right here, city safaris allowed a lighter footprint event that still has the same enticing in-game bonuses to draw players to travel to a location, but without the whole logistic nightmare that is golf is or safari zones. <laughs> Translation, they like it better than when people are actually out there in the city more than in a specific location like office in the park or something similar to it. Why? Well, mostly because in the end of the day, the park can be enticing. However, most of the time you can actually go out and play and that still is better in the long run. You don't have problems mm -hmm. with, um, you know, uh, cell service in one place because, again, they have to boost the service there. If you want a lot of people playing in the game and things like that, so... Uh, the economic impact uh, of City Safaris is massive, with more than 50% of the participant trainers being outside of the region where the event is taking place. And sorry for drowning, <laughs> for drowsing <laughs> at this point. <laughs> it was a long day. Yeah. So uh, it says Barcelona is a perfect location because it's worth visiting due to its cultural history. Many, many land parks, easy to reach, and all over Europe and other international um, destinations. Um, the waterfront location makes it definitely a special place to visit and a perfect opportunity to extend your stay even post in-game event. This was not the case for some cities that were picking for safari zones as the limited factor there is one on-site public infrastructure. So basically, just like, again, like I said before, when you actually have more of the people uh, in the game, 
uh, in one place, it's harder, especially for like the normal, the locals out there, be like, oh, this uh, this part of the park is gonna be completely blocked off because it's gonna be a huge event. And even though it's actually pretty niche, regardless, and you know, there's stuff going on inside those specific places, it feels like you're so constricted of what usually Pokemon Go would be at that point. Yes, it may be big. But definitely not something that um, can hold all the players at once when it comes down to it. <clears throat> so, uh, however the maze may be, uh, they're actually really excited about how City Safari Zones are becoming a big success in that regard. Um, a couple of other things to note, like the enticing things are happening, like, you know, finding Skittles and Gibbles, Relicans, um, you know, those po things are Pokemons that actually help the adventure going. Um, player activities will key of the factors. The city is accessible to international travelers. A strong local community is a must, just like another people are saying. Uh, we want a mix of tourism, high player count, and easy access both for local and international travelers. Uh, feature focus software picked in collaboration with local community and travel guidance. The idea is to make sure that everyone is participating in seeing the entire city. And then the Pokestops feature various locations across Barcelona, which should work for both local and incoming trainers. So, even I, I am. However, the case may be, I think it was nice to have it in the city for that point. Now, some of the questions that, I, that, that we're asking is, will City Safari play golf as events? No. Um, there is already a, a something planned for 2024. Uh, IRL events will always be at the core of Niantic and one of the core successes driven uh, for the community. There are many reasons in-game balances is one of them, and making two dense events calendar makes every, <laughs> every event less exciting. So... A bit, a bit of translation on that on that front is that, yes, they are planning for big things to happen in 2034, and IRL events is definitely one of the things that they want to keep on going. But big events like Go Fest or Go Tours are definitely going to be the big factors to it. However, if we do major oh, events yeah. like that every single time, just like, you know, if people are thinking, oh, maybe City Safaris or Safari Zone should be equal even, or even stronger at that point than Go Fest and things like that, then the whole game becomes a little bit dull because... Yes, you are traveling to those places. Yes, you're catching those Pokemons. But why always you know, put so much in effort into doing such big events when the smaller ones, like you know, Series of Faris at that point, really come to just show that even if you can't make it to the big ones, you're still, there's still something out there for the small player base that still want to travel. Any thoughts before we continue? Yeah. Um, so just like uh, when we did uh, Go Tour Hoenn, uh, I kind of made the decision uh, to only do go to uh, Holland that uh, this year, uh, just like to not travel uh, multiple times. Yeah. Uh, but um, I think uh, it helps uh, split up the traffic, so not as many people uh, feel like going to Go Fest and then kind of feeling left out when they don't go, because mm -hmm. uh, you know there's only a limited amount of spots. Uh, I think being able to, you know, kind of split up who's going where is, is really cool. Uh, even though, you know, there's going to be people that go to every single event for sure. And uh, that that's fine, too. Yeah. Uh, but um, I, I think it's uh, really uh, nice to be able to kind of split up uh, the events a little bit. I know they're not as exciting for the smaller ones, but I think that's good. Uh, but uh, also for events like GoTour, uh, we had co uh, connectivity issues. Uh, with the, you know, cellular towers and everything. So um, it's nice to not have to worry about that as much either uh, when yeah. you're having uh, people split up all around the city. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, it, it's not going to be that bad uh, and, and when, uh, really when you the, got that many. The biggest example, is, especially when it comes down to, like, you know, golfers and places like that, is that they split up the events between the park and the city. And then just having the ability to play half the day in the park and, you know, do whatever you need to do during the time and then go to the city and play the entire day afterwards. Really, in Tyson is that even the city itself can become the greater play of Pokemon in the end of the day. So um, don't get discouraged just because of that, of thinking that the park itself is also the like the biggest factor to it. Because, yes, you have special research and things like that happening, but the city itself should be the biggest factor when it comes down to traveling and exploring because of how Pokemon really ambitious it is nature so i like it anyways um just a few more things to note uh, will series of our sons be their tire 
they are being placed on hold for the time being, although City Safari or City Safaris are the new format that is not a GoFest type event. Again, Safari Sons felt more like GoFest or mini GoFest just for the reason that you're only in one place playing the event. While City Safaris goes throughout the city, just being able to participate and really explore the culture of that specific place. <clears throat> um, partnerships with local transportation companies. Yes and no, it depends on the event. Uh, the main tool being used to make a Pokemon Go for every game has been PvP. Is that something that we can expect in the coming days now? This is something that I'm going to read toward the world, quote to world, what they told us. So. Uh, the strongest game loop we have is called Catch and Collect, but there are other game loops that can be used for this purpose. And one of them is PvP bat uh, battle events and tournaments. PvP is not the only angle we are supporting, and we want to support any type of gameplay that brings players or brings people together, be it raids, PvP, or something else. Our goal is to always get people outside rather than to keep them inside. Remember that, quote, that part of the quote. It's, the goal is always to get people outside rather than to keep them inside. End quote. And then one last thing here. Are there any updates coming to the base game? There are still things coming this year, 2023, I may, ask, I may add there. And there are very strong roadmap for 2044. No concrete features we want to share at this moment. And that's pretty much it when it comes down to the article. That little part is actually, I really think that that's, um, I'm actually okay with how they said it because Pokemon Go is a go out and play kind of game. Yes, there are things in the game like PvP that requires you to basically have strong cell service. You know, GBL definitely something that a lot of people want to do. Um, but the goal is basically to maintain that strong sense of let's go out and play. And that's why they never really... I don't think that that's that, well, the only reason, but at the same time, I feel like we may feel like PvP is always on the back foot. I know they're always working on it. But again, catch and collect is the big part of what Pokemon Go is. Chris, your thoughts, please. Uh, <clears throat> are we talking? Um, are we talking about the uh, the Safari zones? No, we're talking about we're like talking the about um, uh, the PvP and how to make Pokemon Go a for your game at that point. Uh, yeah. Um, <coughs> like uh, one of the things I'd bring up with that uh, is like uh, how they pre-nerfed. Uh, uh, Claude Sire before it even came out. Mm -hmm. uh, they're keeping an eye on things that they think might overturn the meta mm -hmm. before it even gets a chance to overturn the meta. Yep. Uh, which seems kind of uh, seems kind of annoying uh, to people that were you know excited for Claude Sire and like breaking the meta with it. Uh, but I I think it is important to not shake up the meta too much with a new Pokemon. Uh, I, th I still think it has a nice uh, little niche area. Right. Uh, for sure, its typing is superb. Uh, but you want to keep the... Uh, you want to keep it exciting with a nice variety instead of, you know, you needing a... Uh, you needing a certain Pokemon to win. Uh, like how... Uh, I'm blanking on its name. The Rock Fairy type that everyone wants to use the extra oh, car large. Uh, carving. Carbink, yeah, because uh, I was running Carbink too. That thing is chunky. It's very hard to beat if you don't have the right uh, Pokemon to counter it. Um, so I know that can be very frustrating. That makes people not want to play, uh, especially if it gets like repetitive. Uh, so you know, uh, getting getting variety and not being forced to use something like a Claude Sire, I, I think is very important. Um, but uh, yeah. Uh, I know, I know, you know, not everyone plays for PvP, but it is important to remember there are definitely people that uh, like to do that competitive edge. I'm not going to say that PvP is a small community. It's definitely a big community out there. Um, I just think that uh, Pokemon Go can really bring on together what PvP can really show us if they know what to do right with it. Um, it's not something like, oh, walk your kilometers and you get more sets or kind of deal. Um, Although, you know, they could do that, but of course, let us stack the sets. <laughs> but uh, I'm more thinking that PvP can actually show us that there is always a niche for competitive Pokemon out there. 
even if um, the game is not as the same as the main series or anything like that. So, um, regardless of how maybe um, Pokemon is always looking at all these uh, aspects of the game, bringing more. Uh, I know a lot of people are probably a little, uh, I don't say enraged, but more like disappointed that some of the new features are not as what to expect. <clears throat> but regardless of how maybe it's keeping the game alive in some ways. So um, we'll leave it at that for now. If we have more information, we'll let you know. Hopefully this new feature or this last new features in the last two months are going to be interesting to say the least. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. All right. Our last thing, of course, would be the Sirius Safari that was announced for Taiwan. Um, there wasn't very much news about this. I think they always like to keep a few Sirius Safari zones as hush hush as possible, but there will be people out there. This is actually happening in on March 9 <coughs> of 2024 and then March 10 of 2024. So, um, Nice to know that there is already a Sirius Safari Zone planned for next year, anyways. Similar to the last few, uh, just a few other Pokemons like Breaking Region Lock. Um, like, I think Buffalon is one of them. <laughs> so, that's really? It. Yeah, but regardless of how maybe, um, you know, it's Sirius Safari Zone with the Eevees and everything. Same as before when it comes down to it. Um, that's that when it comes down to Pokemon Go news, because, you know, there's always a lot to go on, on anyways. So. <laughs> Um, one, uh, actually, no, not one thing, but let's talk about, let's talk about our quick, uh, Pokemon Sleep update. Um, we had just had the Halloween event. We're actually at the end of the Halloween event. So, uh, I'm thinking of reaching Master 10 before the, tonight's end. I think we're final. we'll get one last little, uh, Halloween sleep before we actually get to that. I was able to unlock the Tundra, so I am going to the Tundra next week, even though it's gonna, my team is completely like the worst in the world when it comes down to it. Um, didn't get any shinies, although I'm hoping for a shiny this last day, of course. Uh, Pikachu with a hat, Manette, and Shepard were actually released on the, during this Pokemon Sleep event. Um, but yeah, uh, any other cool things happening there for you, Chris? Yeah, um, it's definitely been fun, the Halloween event in uh, Pokemon Sleep. Uh, everyone's trying to get the shiny... Uh, Halloween hat Pikachu. It cannot evolve. It's kind of like Pokemon Go. Uh, but uh, uh, I know one person I got it pretty hyped from. I thought I got it. It was not shiny. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I did get a shiny this week. I got a shiny Metapod. <laughs> and uh, after unlocking the Tundra, I actually had a Swablu uh, that was on the belly of my Snorlax. Uh, and I was able to grab that. Um but definitely looking forward to the Tundra next week. Let's hope for more Shinies. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a good passive grind. One thing that I'm going to really definitely say is that um, try your best. You really don't have to. If you don't reach Masters in a certain island, keep yourself in that island until you feel like you're actually good anyways. Um, my free account actually finally got to Masters on Green Island. So it's finally <laughs> moving to uh, uh, the Scion Beach. Although it already has the uh, Hollow updated and everything, uh, it doesn't have really have any good Pokemon right now. So, um, regardless of how many whatever it catches, it whatever it will use. So that uh, like count is gonna be definitely going there in a moment, or you know by the time this week next week comes around, I will be going to the Tundra to actually start um, getting that area bonus as much as possible. And who knows? I mean, Chris and I are always happy about this game now. So. Maybe in the future, more Pokemons are going to be appearing, or even Legendaries at that point. Who knows, really? But um, Pokemon Sleep is definitely... Um, it's definitely not a... What, what, how they say it? I think it's, not, it's, not, it's a marathon. It's not a, uh, a sprint to the end of the line. Um, <coughs> yeah, not a sprint race, a marathon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so definitely keep eye when it comes down to Pokemon Sleep in that regard. If you guys want to see us more, uh, just follow our Twitters. We post some cool things happening there. and Or join our Discord. If you guys want us to show you cool stuff happening, just join the Discord. It would be nice. Uh, I'll drop a little bit of something I thought up this week. Uh, I told Pure Letter, uh, I thought about it recently. Uh, Magnemite gives you extra pot space mm -hmm. for more ingredients. So I, I told him, what if on the last day you had a full team of Magnemite so you could fit like... 
an extra, you know, 50 spots in your pot. So literally all your ingredients go in the pot. Mm-hmm. The, the points would be crazy. So definitely going to test that out as soon as I can get more Magnemite. I literally only have one right now. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a Magnetone uh, that I was able to catch a long time ago. So it's not bad, but I, I will try but, to get another one eventually when it comes down to it. Because so. legit, you just got to uh, switch your team just for cooking and then you can switch it right back. So yeah. uh, it seems kind of OP to me. But nah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not sh- entirely sure how that works. I think but... that's how it works. I might be wrong, though. I, I think you uh, might have to uh, activate the skill on Magnemite to actually do it, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, whatever the case may be, hopefully we'll get good stuff anyways. Um, yeah, so that is Pokemon Sleep recap, because, again, we love that game too much. Uh, 10 o'clock has hit, so we actually have a little bit less time than I expect it to be. Uh, let's get into some PEP. Get good, get wrecked. Here we go, Chris. Uh, GBL has just shifted into the Grey League and Electric Cup Grey League edition. Yeah. So if you guys want to keep an eye on that. Uh, at least what I know, the Electric Cup edition, uh, if you have a Luxray with Mutt or mm-hmm. uh, Hidden Power uh, Ground, you are basically over. So... <laughs> um, yeah, any have you been playing any GBL this last few days? Um, I only played a little bit of Halloween Cup. That was a bit of fun. Um, honestly, I didn't. I didn't go too crazy though. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I do know. Uh, one of my coworkers uh literally hit legend. Oh wow! On bro. like the last day of Halloween Cup. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. He he's pretty good at hitting legend too. Jeez, I might have to get started. Um. Going ham if your <laughs> your coworkers are doing that. Yeah, I'm like, man, I've never hit legend, man. <laughs> Bruh. My man has all the time in the world. Anyways, um, yeah, so that should be all right now. Uh, I know there was a play Pokemon event happening a few weeks back. I don't have the information on that, so I apologize. Congratulations to all the winners, of course, when it happened. Uh, I think DeFi 250 from the uh, Goldcast actually hit legend for the first time too. So that's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Congratulations to her. And yeah, you have any updates on your tournaments there, Chris, or are you on break? Um, I'm on the back burner for this week, uh, but from what I can tell, uh, we we can't. I I I can't tell if we're in the lead or not. <laughs> to, mm. to be honest, mm. I'm trying to look at the points, but uh, I, I guess the the week for battles hasn't ended yet, so I'm I'm not sure. Well, it is how it is, I guess. <laughs> Uh, and that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else. Pokemon Go has not tweeted anything right now, so I'm kind of glad that they don't, we don't have any more news to cover right now. Um, but yeah, it is how it is. Uh, anything else to cover, Chris? Anything else that you might want to add? Um, I did want to mention, because uh, I got reminded of it when we were talking about showcases, uh, today the showcases for uh, uh, Wooper were glitched. Uh, it was all Squirtle. So if you had an extra large Squirtle, good to go. Uh, yippee. So, uh, actually, everyone that got an extra large whooper, uh, you, you couldn't really use it. <laughs> so, actually, there was a Niantic support announcement to this whole thing, actually. And this was really? early in the month of October. Uh, let's see. I don't know if I can find it. It's been a while. And, of course, they talk about all sorts of things. Okay. Uh, it's, I think it says right here. Says right here, please, uh, trainers, please note that, that we will be updating the official site and blog with the full information affecting the remainders of the venture season bound. The updated list of Pokemon eligible to compete in showcases are Smobile from October 16th to the 17th, Drifloon 29th to the 31st, Gatita and Marini, November 15th to the 19th. And it says Whoopers uh, community showcase has also been canceled. Thanks for your understanding. So, yeah, they did cancel oh, that back. Okay. And this was back in October 16th. So, we definitely had a good chunk. I guess everybody was really com- um, confused when they said Squirtle. I don't definitely know. Definitely forgot about it. Yeah. I don't know why they even picked Squirtle at this point if they were just going to cancel it regardless. The um, only thing I can think is uh, they just turned on the last uh, Calm Day because. Uh, <laughs> what was, what was the last Tim- Calm Day? Was it Squirtle? No, that would have been Timber. Timber. 
Yeah, big, interesting. We didn't have that, and then so I I don't know really what they thought about that. I guess more items for us if you still had a Squirtle from then. So yeah, I mean it worked out for me. I have, I have a huge Squirtle. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that was that when it comes down to it. Anyways, thank you so much for listening, everybody. We appreciate everybody who actually comes to the stream. Appreciate to uh, Levitt, uh, Paper Cut, all Kiki, the listeners, Hamtaro, anybody who was actually in the stream tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, yeah, so make sure that you check us out in Podcast Services Fees. If I can put things correctly here. Uh, you can always listen to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Arha Radio, Spotify, or even Amazon Music if you, if you really want to. Uh, if you can leave us a re- review, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. It helps us quite a bit, actually. Uh, for the social media, myself at Pura, uh, or Pura Let It Go. Uh, <laughs> the Purify Podcast also is part of it, if you guys want to follow us there. Uh, Chris at PKMN Trigger, please, with a C at the end. Uh, email us anything, info, anything that you want to talk to us about, even your days or how your weeks have been. Podcast at gmail.com. Join our Discord. It's free to join. We always post there if you need to. Uh, and don't forget to check us out at thepurifypodcast.com or the Professor Network. With that being said, uh, Chris, how about you take us away for the night? All right, all right, all right. Uh, we just... Uh, getting to the end of spooky season. Uh, we're getting close to turkey time, Christmas time. Uh, hope you guys are getting excited. Uh, definitely a lot to hunt out there. Definitely a lot of fun to be had with family and friends. So uh, get your Pokeballs. Uh, get your friendship up with friends. And, you know, get out trading. Get out having fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll catch you guys next week where hopefully we got even more news for you. Uh, it That's looks like there probably is. So see you guys next week. Peace out, guys. Keep purifying, everybody. We'll see you guys next time.